when did it go from bad to really worse? When, uh, when I got pregnant with my daughter, it got worse to the point that he got very upset because he was cheating. Like I say, he continued to cheat all the time. And he was very upset at me because I don't look the same. And he would go to the grocery store. We go to any grocery store to go to the grocery if I go with him, if I'm allowed to go. And he see a magazine from another girl looking so pretty and nice body. He said, oh, I wish you would look like her. Okay, how to spot a narcissistic abuser. And I survived domestic violence. And with me today, the author of I Am Anna, Anna Williams. Anna, welcome to the show. Okay, the book, let's get into it first. Again, Narcissist, How to Spot a Narcissist. Your book is called I Am Anna. And I Am Breaking the Silence. That's the name of the book, correct. And, and the... Why I am Anna, because this is really important. I am Anna and I am breaking the silence is the title of the book. And the reason why I chose I am Anna is because I am Becky. I am Sophia. I am you. And that's the reason why I chose that title, because we all going through this. I mean, not all of it, but no one really wants to break the silence. So I decided to identify with our women that they going through this if to break the silence. So I am Anna is my, as I am my sister. I am my mother. I am my best friend. I am my daughter. I am women. I, that's correct. Okay. So really important here, the whole piece, because the, there's so many reasons why you wrote the book and your courage is just so evident throughout the piece with let's get to starting with it how do you because well, how do you spot a narcissist abuser you really don't you don't know so, so tell us the story because it, it starts out as a love story tell us the story where were you it was a you know beverly hills rodea drive <laughs> love all of it and it wasn't. Tell us the story. Well, I met this gentleman in Los Angeles, California. It was amazing how I met him. I ended up there at a place by accident. I ended up in a club and I was not dressed. So when I meet this guy, I didn't even see him. He came and tapped on my shoulder. And then when he wasn't there, he was on the other side. And he said, hi. He say, I would like to talk to you or dance. Do you would like to have a drink? I say, no, I don't drink, but I take a soda. So he brought me a soda and I saw him very muscular, very handsome, tall at that time. And I didn't understand why well, he likes me because I was not, I didn't have the makeup. I didn't have no clothes to look very pretty. I mean, even though I'm beautiful, but I wasn't making what we do with the makeup. So I was like, hmm, this is kind of weird. He was very charming, very polite and a, a lot of women was after him at that time. And I was like, why are you choosing me out of all these women? Why me? I told him, you know, I don't look like them. And pro plus, I didn't speak that much English at the time. So it was kind of hard. But he said, you know, you're going to be the mother of my kids. So I'm like, whoa, that was kind of like weird. But to me, it was like, oh, really? I was amazed because I I feel like I was nobody. Who, why this guy, he looks so good and he's not... Spanish, he's from another culture, why he's paying attention to me. So I feel kind of flattered. So he made you feel good. He did. Okay. He also focused on you exclusively at that moment when you first met. Correct. Mm, really interesting there. And charming, right? No doubt about it. Charming. He was very nice. So there we go. And you're like, ooh. And calling the girlfriends, right? And saying, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, well, actually, you were out with the friend if you read the book. So, but you're like, okay. And then what happened? It was romance. It was love. You got married. So just give us a little bit of like what that felt like. 
So he actually gave me his phone number. I exchanged numbers with him and we started dating. We went out for a uh, lunch or dinner and he was trying to impress me. He, and that night, he was very happy to meet me. For some reason, he was, it was like, oh my God, I met this girl. And I think because I was different than the other ones. I don't know why he's so. But when we started dating, he was very romantic. He would bring me flowers. He would bring me cards. He would say, I would like to take you here and there. And I was amazed because this man, he looked like a celebrity and I was not. And he started telling me that he has two sisters. They're very famous. But I didn't even know what he was saying because I was not understanding the English like I understand now. And also... I didn't believe him because I never saw that at that time. So when did it change? And well, what happened? You guys, right? The romance continued. You guys got married. And and what the, the piece also, so you were independent, right? But you were with your family in the sense mm -hmm. that you were close, you had people around you. What started to happen? as your relationship developed? When we moved together, I saw a change. He started pushing me around. He would get mad and I didn't understand. And I thought it was my fault that I make him mad because of my lack of English. So he started to control me, but I didn't notice. I thought he loved me. And then perhaps I go to my mom's house and I'm already stepping one foot at her door. And he is calling my mom's house. And my mom is, why is he calling you? You just left the house. You live 20 minutes away from him. It's just weird. She said that he's just, you're stepping in the door and he's already calling you. What's, what's up with that? I said, mommy, he just concerning. He just loved me. He just want to make sure I'm okay. Please, mom. That's how love is. It's not like back in your days. This is new love. And she said, okay. So what happened? He was controlling me little by little. I couldn't really go anywhere. I have to resign my job because he was extremely impulsive and jealous and embarrassing me in front of my friends. He didn't care. And he started watching me. Perhaps I went to work one day and he's supposed to pick me up and he didn't pick me up. And I live in down, I mean, I'm in downtown LA. And then I got on the bus and somehow I see him in the car. I'm like, why are you following me? The, at the time, there was no cell phones. So, you know, we're talking about early 90s. And I was kind of freaking out. But I didn't see anything until everything got worse. Mm, everything got to the point that he started cursing me out. He started to cheat with other girls because he was working at this job and I go over there and he was very nice to all the girls. He was so sweet and very polite that he walked the girls to their cars. And I was saying, why is not like that with me? And I said, maybe it's my fault. I deserve this because I don't, I embarrass him when I speak because he was like, you embarrass me. Do not talk. When I'm with my friends, you know, you don't talk. And I thought it was because it was my English. So, so there was a piece there that I think that that's really important as we thought what this looks like, whether there's women that are in it, mm -hmm. whether there's the predators that are out there because narcissists are predators yeah. and, or just even women that they, they get to see the signs so they don't get to be abused. So originally you started out, your, your family was here. You were close to your mom. What mm. step did he do that was really important that continued to when you moved in with him and then, and what that looked like? Cause I think this is really important. Oh, uh, when I moved with him, he wouldn't let me talk to my mother. He was telling me, you don't need your mom. You got me now. You always want to talk to her. What is wrong with you? Why you always want to be around your mom? I say, I grew up in a family where we had love. And my dad and my mom are very important to me. My dad passed away at the time he was in around with us. Or well, after, I can remember when he died. But my dad wasn't in America yet. So he was to the point that I couldn't go to visit her. And I have breakfast with my mother and my older sister every Sunday morning. We will get together and have breakfast. I didn't want to be around him because I already know how he was. Very rude and mean and embarrassed me all the time. It was rude. Very rude. He isolated you. He sure did. He took my identity to the point that I didn't believe in me. I, it was very hard. Being in a domestic violence situation is super hard. They He controlled my mind. He controlled my 
friends, my family. He took my life. I lost my skills. He took your money too, controlled you that way, made you quit your job, right? He sure did. Which is, and so was it, it was done in stages though, right? Yes, it's, it's little by little. You don't see the signs right away, and but you have to, you know, I, I would su suggest for all the girls to be very careful that controlling, that texting, that calling where you are or where you where you being, where you going. No, you don't need to go there. No, you don't need to wear that. It's very, very possessive, controlling freak. Those are good signs that we as women need to pay attention to because that's what's my, my signs. But I didn't know at that time that there were signs. Okay, I'm so glad you're leaning into that. So then when did it go from bad to really worse? When, uh, when I got pregnant with my daughter, it got worse to the point that he got very upset because he was cheating. Like I say, he continued to cheat all the time. And he was very upset at me because I don't look the same. And he would go to the grocery store. We go to any grocery store to go to the grocery if I go with him, if I'm allowed to go. And he see a magazine from another girl looking so pretty and nice body. He said, oh, I wish you would look like her. So it started bringing me down more and more. And then he would hit me. He didn't care if I was pregnant or not. One time um, he got very angry because we went to find out I went to my, by myself to, the first time to get an ultrasound because I didn't want him to come with me because I wanted to find out what I have in a girl or a boy because he wanted to have a boy, not a girl. So That's I went by myself and they told me it was a girl. I got home. I said, I got to tell this man a lie and I don't lie, but I, if I don't lie, he's going to kill me. So I had to go home and say, so what are we having? So excited. Oh, we having a boy, I think. They couldn't really tell because I didn't really, really want to lie so, like, really bad. So because that's not me. I don't like lying. And I just, I think they say it's a boy. They're not sure. They couldn't see it real good. Okay, I'm so happy. But the next time that I have to go to the hospital to check the sonogram, the baby, he has to come with me. And they told him, the lady, he was very angry. Oh, yeah, congratulations, you're having a girl. Oh, you have, I'm having a girl? And he looked at me very angry. He, she said, yeah, I told your wife that you're having a girl. I said, oh, my God, why did this lady say this to him? Oh, my God. He walked out very angry and got in the car, and he was cursing and yelling, and I was just sitting there quiet, crying. But because I was seven months pregnant, probably at the time, he didn't hurt me. But he was very angry, slamming the car, brakes and going fast and just cursing all the way. How dare you going to lie to me? How dare this? I say, I'm sorry. I didn't understand what you were saying. I'm so sorry. I apologize to him. When, what was it like? So it was, again, it's first the signs of possession, mm -hmm. isolation, right? With your mom and your sister and a, a financial isolation right control and isolation mm -hmm. then it, it's it's also emotional abuse and and, and breaking you down mm -hmm. when did the this was all going on when did the first incident of physical abuse and what did that look like and how did you feel after i gave birth he grabbed his stature was really big this big that we had in the living room he threw it at me and it happened to hit my arm. So I went to the hospital and before he would just push me and throw me in the bed. But that time he grabbed a big old statue like this and I went to the hospital. Then after that, he could go and put in pillows in my face, putting me in my bed, slapping me, sitting me down with one slap here in my chest like this. I have to sit down if I don't listen. Boom, I go get hit or I get in the car and trying to run away from him. He would kick the glass of the car and all the glass come in my face and you're not going away snatch me and get my kids out and or hit me and and and, and outside where the neighbors are and then one neighbor one time saw her grab a broom and hit him with the broom and told him don't you hit your wife you don't hit the mother of your kids it was very bad so just just so bad mm -hmm. what and how did and so at that time what was going through your head and, and and now i'm seeing other women out there right because that's always what this is about that they're like i'm not getting out i'm i'm now i'm in it mm -hmm. how 
what when did you know that when you you had to get out and 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 how did you if other women are watching are you saying that you, you you get to do this when you don't see an option to do it you what happens to me i start feeling really bad for my kids and they were seeing everything he will do everything in front of the kids he didn't care so i started thinking about then and i said well this man is gonna kill me or i will kill him or my kids gonna end up with him and it will be devastated so i started getting mentally strong and start telling myself you can do this why are you being so weak you are a woman we are survivors you need to stop you need to stop love yourself look at you you got this you speak two language even if you don't speak it perfectly you're smart you you're strong your mama brought you from to this world just to die in, in another man's hands absolutely not so i would have to talk to myself and say that one day i will survive and i will tell the story to save other women because when you go to a war you don't leave the soldiers behind. You go and get your bodies and your friends and say, hey, I'm here. You're not alone. When when did that, because that didn't just happen. When did that just strike you that you're like, all right, no, I ain't going down this way. And and I get to survive to tell my story. What, what was that moment? It happens when I moved to Florida in 1998. He got worse after a few months that we moved here because his family has a lot of money. They very they very wealthy, so his family give them money, and he has so much money and control. And a lot of women, oh, this is so and so sister, you know they very famous, and they wanted to be around him. And that's when he got worse, and he would tell me, "I wish I wouldn't be with you. I wish I would just go away and hit me and call me stupid or dumb or or anything." And the pillows will never stop putting his leg on top of me and my body choked me. Wouldn't stop. That wouldn't stop. And he hated me. And I didn't understand. I didn't understand why he hated me. He hated me to the point that he wanted to kill me. So I, I started thinking, I, I'm just got to do something. I can't, I can't continue here. I have to go. I have to go. And I would pray day and night. And he would hate to see me reading my my Bible studies, my meditations, but that's the only way I was able to survive through God because I pray and I pray and I told God, keep me strong, mentally strong. It's very important to focus and see the future. Not that that's only momentarily, even though it takes years, but each day at the time, you have to, no matter what the, the, so the abuser do to you, you have to remember who you are, who am I? Am I this weak? And you need to fight mentally. Your mind must be focused in yourself. But remember at the time when I was going through this, it was not a lot of help. There was not much internet. There was not cell phones and nothing. Now it's so much help. They're like, whoa, I would you just text and they would come and get me. But behind the man, or, 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 or they have these signs that you put a dad, you do these signs. Anybody can help you. But back in the days, especially because I was in a celebrity family, it was even worse because at one time I did call the police and I was all over the news. And I didn't want this family to be, you know, up there because what the brother did, because the brother didn't, they didn't do anything to me. So I was in a very bad position, but at the same time, I learned from this family. I learned how to outthink my ex-husband. I will study his movements. I will know his moves. So I have to outthink him. And that's how I was able to get out of that situation. All right, getting getting back to this because it's the other side too is that when people and people did not re know you were in this mm -hmm. and, and until right because that's that's part of the mo mm -hmm. of what they do is to really put you in an isolated controlled situation. Right. So if there were three things, mm -hmm. three signs of a narcissistic abuser. What would be the three signs to look for? Control, perhaps controlling where you go. How long are you staying? Where are you? Why are you staying there so long? How did you dress? Who are you talking to? They absolutely you from your friends, from your family, from your work, from the media, from anything now. Okay. So definitely control. And then what was the next thing? Because isolation, right? The... Sure. What, 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 I mean, again, you went from the financial situations that you can't even go to work. You can't, you can't because there was times perhaps I would go to church, but my eyes is, is bruised, but I would wear glasses and I would cry in church and ask, 
deliver me from this man. I know that you can do this. But God had a purpose that I have to go through the and oh and get strong because I would say I, I was fighting for my life and for my kids. But it was because I have to be here today and tell my story so I can help others. And, and so when when with the abuse, he was not careful to hide it. He 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 you, Oh yeah, he hid it. Okay. He did. He wouldn't not show it to nobody up there. Nobody will know. I couldn't talk to anybody. Perhaps if we had his friends, I couldn't say anything. And if I say hi or something, why were you talking to them in? But he would use the N word. Why? I say, why if they say hi? There's nothing I can do. Uh, you're embarrassing me. Don't talk. To me. And if I'm there, just do not talk. Do not open your mouth. I say, okay. I have to be like that. So how long did it from start from the beginning of the relationship to when you finally got out and then we're going to talk about you getting out what that what that day looked like and and how long was how long was the the abuse? How long it was like 14 years. Jesus. Yeah, I couldn't get out. It was bad. Very bad. So finally Mm -hmm. finally what tell us the how you got out and 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 when when and then even that was like now where do i go but what what did, when you said that was it i'm i'm going for it what did that uh, day look like for i had a um a vision about a week before i feel like an angel came to my room and touched me and say everything he grabbed me and touched me and he said everything's gonna be okay so i got up because i didn't sleep with him i wake up and i was like whoa is he gonna kill me today i didn't know what was going on so i went to the room he was still asleep in his room with his sleep then my ex-mother-in-law which is his stepmom called me and check on me she says is everything okay i'm just checking on you i told her the whole thing what was going on so when you're ready to leave let me know I will help you. So that gave me like, oh, somebody will leave me. I, I got help. So that's how I decided. And then that night when he was very angry, he had the machete. He was going like this and swinging the machete on the floor. And he said, I'm going to kill you. And I say, okay. And I just pray. And I know he was not going to kill me because I made up my mind. No, I'm not going to die in your, in your hands. No, I am not. And, but I told myself that very often. So when he went outside, he said, I'm going to smoke a cigarette and I'll be right back because when I get back, get ready because I'm killing you. I said, no problem. In my head, I didn't say nothing to him. I called the police, 911, did not say a word because my sisters-in-law, they're too famous and I didn't want no one to know what was going on. So I hang up, took the phone out of the landline, took it out because, you know, they call you back. You call 911, they call you back. So I did that. The next minute I know the police is on my front door. They came and said, did, you, did somebody call the police? And he looked at me. I said, yes, I did. So what's going on? He said, he's going to kill me. He said, what? Okay, they talked to him and he lied. I don't know what he said to them. He said, the old police came to me and said, you need to get yourself ready because yes, he will kill you. So I grabbed some groceries back and put little things in there. And I started getting ready to leave. And then I started thinking, no, where am I going to go? I don't have any money, nothing. Where am I going? No. And my older son he said, Mom, you believe in God? I said, yes. Mom, please, let's go. Mommy, please believe God's going to help us. He's going to kill you, Mom. And that was it. And I was able to escape. And he got the cell phone. He got the debit cards or credit cards that he had me at that time. I didn't have anything. And then I called my ex-mother-in-law and she was able to send me five hundred dollars to help me went to a hotel room that was the last time because i forgot to try escape before but it didn't work out because i went pregnant came back but this is the last escape that i did and i told the kids look at this gate take a look they look we never coming back say oh sure mommy i'm sure let's go and i'm smiling and making sure that they are safe mentally because it affected them it's, it's not right for no one to abuse you because you don't just suffer with the abuser. You also suffer because of your kids. So it's like a double suffering. But I fight for my life. I went to clean anything I had to clean. I used to take the kids to survive and I didn't ask no one for money, no child support. I couldn't get it. I couldn't even get my divorce 
because he was very evil. He didn't want to divorce me. And now he's, well, I'm not going to talk about him. If there, the one, one thing that you get to tell other women or women who are around someone potentially who they, they have an, an idea that they, they may be abused. What would you say to that woman that just got that pillow off her face and she's crying in the bathroom, locked in there? And now it's another day because she has her kids and she knows that she doesn't have the resources. She don't have an out plan. You don't have an out plan. You don't. What would you say to them? Well, I would suggest for that person to prepare a plan, but you have to talk. You need to talk to somebody. You need to break the silence. They're not as strong as they think they are, honey. We're stronger and they know that. And that's why they want to keep us captive, slavering us, taking us our identity, making us think that we are ugly and it's our fault, but it's not your fault. Never was and never will be. You need to seek for help and you need to make up your mind and know that who you are because you are very strong and you're not going to find out until you start thinking. Mindset is very important. Tell yourself, I am not going to stay here. I was born to be loved and respect and protected. Therefore, your mindset that yes, you can do it because if I did it, I'm sure you can. It's just a mindset. Believe in you. We are women. We are so strong. And that's why they want to keep us like that because they're afraid of us. Stand up and open the silence. Break the silence, okay? Please do. And if you need any help, it's a lot of help up there. We will have some links of some, some of where people can go. Anna Williams. I am Anna. I am Anna and I'm Breaking the Silence. That's the name of my book. And also, I'm, I'm in another book with Mildred Mohammed, the sniper soul survivor as well. She is Mildred Mohammed, and um, one of my chapters in her book, too, is launching on October the 31st. So I'm All right, well, we'll get into that when it comes out. Let's do that, too, and link it. But again, Anna Williams, I'm breaking the silence. I am Anna. I am Anna. Thank you. Thank you.